Today we're going to learn Masechet Eruvin Daftet. Um, today she or is sponsored by Yael Asher in memory of her father Elchanan Yosifuf ben Yeshua Zechrono Levracha on his Yeritzah. We finished yesterday. We were discussing if we took we had a mavoy. Generally, the beam has to go on the walls of the alleyway. What if you had a peg, and on those pegs, you put some pegs on the outside of the alley, and on those pegs, you hung the beam. Would that work? So Rava said it doesn't work at all because, remember, the beam, according to him, has to be lying on the walls of the alley. But Rav Chiste had said it depends. It all depended on this machloket that we discussed before, which is if you view the beam as a machitza, as if it's an imaginary wall that drops down, then it's going to depend on the person who is more stringent is going to be more lenient here, and the person who is more lenient there will be more stringent here. Remember what that was all about? Because if you view the inner wall drops down and the inner part of the beam drops down, right? There's a whole issue. If we're going to say it creates a wall, there's a thickness of a tefach in that beam. So the question becomes, which part, where does the wall fall from? Does it fall from the outer edge of it or the inner edge? If you say it falls from the outer edge, then you're going to be more lenient when it comes to a regular beam because you're going to say that all the space underneath, between the beam and that's underneath the beam in the mavoi, in the alley, is going to be permitted because the wall goes on the outside. If it goes from the inside, then we're going to say that it only works for you to carry up until where the beam is. Once you get to the beam, the space under the beam, if the imaginary wall drops here, then that space is not going to be allowed. So whatever you hold there comes from Chista to say it will be the opposite in the beam that's hanging outside the Mavoy. Because if you say it's the if the beam hangs outside the alley and you say it falls from the outer part, where we were more lenient in the other case, we're now going to be more stringent because you're your wall is far away from the alley wall. That's not going to work as a beam. But if you say from the inner side, that's right up against the wall, and therefore it will be allowed. So he basically says it's switched, but Rava says nobody actually thinks that this can work. So now we're going to have a question on Rava, but really it's a bit of a question on Rav Chista also, but it probably was just that Rav Adar Barmanu, who asked the question, was in front of Rava, so he asked the question on Rava. So we're starting now from the bottom of Chet Amabet, the last few words. Rav Adar Barmanu uh, Rava. Etive, the word Etive means, it's one of those words that basically explains to you what's going to be, which means we know that we're going to have a Tanaitic source questioning an Amora. So he questions Rava with the following Tanaitic source. Haita korato mishucha otluya. If the beam was mishucha, it was drawn out. Okay, we're going to assume what does drawn out mean? Outside the alley which is going to create our problem here, because now we're going to have a case that's just like it, and yet we're going to see it's different, the halacha. If it's drawn out, or it's luya, or it's hanging. So what do we assume this means? Okay, look at your pictures. Okay, hanging would be number 58 in the pictures. We have a beam in the middle standing up, or a post, that on that is hanging a beam, a cross beam, and it doesn't, you can't really see from the from the video here, but it doesn't reach to the sides of the walls of the mavoi. That means it's hanging. That's literally hanging. It's not attached to anything on the alley walls. It's attached to the floor in between this, right? It's in the space of the alley right at the edge, but it's not attached on either side. So if it's either mishucha, which we assume means outside the mavoi, or tluya, or hanging, it all depends, according to the source, on how far away, and this goes back to laws of Levud that we've discussed before. If it's less than three away from the wall, either outside the Mavoi wall or inside, and we're just saying it's not yet attached to the walls, it's kind of hanging there and suspended, then Tzarich Lavi Kora Acheret. If it, sorry, I skipped. If it's less than three, then laws of Levud apply. And we basically say, oh, no problem, right? We view this as if it's attached to the wall. This is always how Levud works. It's the whole logic of Levud. We view it as if it's attached. And then if it's, sorry, I skipped. If it's more, if it's three or more, 
צריך להביא קורה אחרת. Then you need to bring a new beam, meaning this doesn't work. רשב"ג אומר, פחות מארבעה אין צריך להביא קורה אחרת. ארבעה צריך להביא קורה אחרת. This is interesting. We always say לבוד is three טפחים. Now we're going to learn that there's actually a מחלוקת about it. And רשב"ג holds, רבן שם בן גמליאל held, that four is לבוד. Okay? It's anything less than four טפחים, four hand breaths, would we view it as if it's attached. So this מחלוקת is not really significant for our purposes right now, but for our question, but the point is there happens to be a machloket, is it three or four? Either which way, both these opinions hold that with levud, it works, which means that if it's outside, if we understand, okay, let's read on one more second, my lav is it not mishucha mi bachutz utluyami bifnin, is not the difference between mishucha, drawn out, and tluya, hanging, that hanging is within the airspace of the mavoi, but mishucha is outside the mavoi. And what do you see here? Either opinion holds that as long as it's within three or four tvachim, we view it as if it's attached to the wall. Now, Rava didn't say anything of the sort. He said if it's hanging on these pegs, it doesn't work because it has to be hanging on top of the walls of the mavoi. So therefore, how does Rav explain this? And even Rabbi Rav Chista said, according to one of the opinions, it wouldn't work, right? The Divrei HaMatir Osev here. So he would also have a question. So what is the Gemara answer? We're going to have two different explanations of what Mishucha Otsluya means, which basically both explanations are going to say it doesn't mean what we thought it meant. Mishucha does not mean it's outside, in which case this has absolutely nothing to do with Rava or of Chista. So now what do they say? So the first answer is, um, Lo, no, in fact, not. That's not the way we explain it. Both are inside. In this case, the Brita has nothing to do with outside the Mavoy, and then this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. What is the difference between Mishucha and Tluya? What's drawn out and what's suspended? Mishucha miruachachat utluya mishteruchot. Okay, the picture I showed you before was where there's a, there's a post in the middle. Hanging on that is this beam. It doesn't reach to either wall. That's Tluya. That's going to stay the same. Mishucha means it's drawn to one side, meaning it's attached on one side. In general, we've talked about this beam being attached on both sides. So Mishucha means it's attached on one side and it's not attached on the other. And then again, the question will be, how far away is it from one of the walls or how far is the Tluya case away from both walls? Now you might say, well, why do you need both cases then? So what do they say? Ma'u detema, you might have thought, miruach achad amrin on levud, mishte ruchot lo amrin on levud, kam ashmanan. You might have thought if we just had Mishucha, you might have thought, well, Levud works to connect it to one side, but maybe Levud wouldn't work if it's suspended in the middle and doesn't reach either wall. So the second case is brought, in other words, really, you really didn't need to bring the first case if that's the case, but the Gemara doesn't address that. But we basically say, not only if it's not attached to one wall, but even if it's not attached to both walls, we still use laws of Levud. So as long as the, po- the beam is close enough to the wall that we can say Levud, again, less than three or less than four, depending on who you are and what you hold. But that's what it's teaching us, and it has absolutely nothing to do with a case where it's outside the mavo. A different explanation. Rav Ashi Amar, Mishucha v'hitzluya. It says Mishucha o'tzluya. It doesn't mean either or. It should be read as Mishucha v'tzluya. It's drawn and hanging. Okay, what does this mean? So the Gemara doesn't even know. They say, hey, chidami, so what's the case? Kigon shana'at shte yetedot akumot al shne kotle mavoi. She'ein begofhan shlosha ve'ein ba'achmimutan shlosha. What's the case here? It's on the mavoi walls. It's not outside, but it's both drawn and hanging. So what does this mean? It means, okay, now there's two different pictures here. There's one that you see here, okay, in picture number 60 where it's angled. You have these two pegs coming out from the walls of the mavoi, going up and in, basically on an angle. So they're both higher and further in. And then the beam is going to basically not go across the entire length because it's now going to be, the beam is going to sit on those pegs. So either they're angled, they're um, diagonals, or some people say they actually are um, like, a, like the shape of an L. They go up and they go in, And then hanging on that is the beam. Either which way, the beam is still in the same place. It's just a matter of, are they diagonals or are they like these little posts that that are L-shaped, upside down L-shaped? And then that's the case. Okay, now, what what did they say here? You would have to be 
less than three height in the in the in the pegs, and less than three tvachim going in, or less than four for Rashbag. And then what's the chidush? So in ha- so now you understand mishucha and tluya means both higher up and further in than the walls of the mavoi. And the chidush is ma'u detema o levud amrinan o chavot amrinan. You might have thought that you can either say levud works as going side sideways horizontally. Let's say it doesn't reach; it might work, but it might not also help to lower the height. Okay, you might be able to do only one. Therefore, it comes to teach you levud, right? The levud amrinan o chavot amrinan. Either you can say levud going. Um, horizontally, or maybe the vub works vertically, but it wouldn't necessarily work both horizontally and vertically. Here we have to basically drop down and move over to the side in order for this to work. So they come to teach you. I'm reading on the. You might have thought levud amrinan ochvot amrinan levud vechut lo amrinan. You might have thought, but you can't combine both together. Kamash malan. This comes to teach you the mishoch and taloi that actually you can do both. You can do Levud in two directions. You can both use Levud to have it drop down a level and have it, right, remember, Levud is all imaginary. This is actually higher and off the sides, but since it's all within three Tvachim of distance, or four according to Rashbach, we basically can say, lower it down and move it out to the side, and that works. We can imagine it, we can virtually basically imagine that this goes all the way to the end. Okay, so that was question on Rava from this Mishuchau Tluyak case, Two different ways of understanding what the case is that has absolutely nothing to do with Rava's case of hanging the beam outside the wall. This isn't talking about outside. This is all inside the alley. Tani Rabbi Zakai came to Rabbi Yochanan. We're getting to one of my favorite quotes in the Gemara. Rabbi Zakai comes and says in front of Rabbi Yochanan, he teaches the following Braita. Bein lechayayim v'tachad ha nidon kikarmelit. Between the lechis, and under the beam, right, this space, this is what we were discussing at the end of class yesterday. If you remember, yesterday we said there, there was a machloket about under the beam. How do we view this? Can you carry under there, or is it considered the public domain? And then we saw that Rav Chista said everyone agrees that between the lechi is forbidden, because the lechi doesn't require any sort of thickness, and therefore we can assume it's very thin, and therefore we're not going to allow it to, right, when it's a tefach already, we can say, okay, that's, that, that works. And there, at least, there's a machlok. Rav Chista says everybody, Rav Chista says everybody agrees between the lechi is not going to be allowed. Between the, the vertically standing post, we won't allow that. But here we're going to see it's a subject of debate. So Rabbi, Rabbi Zakai teaches the following bright that says, between the lechis and under the beam is like a carmelite, meaning the rabbis forbade carrying underneath here. Because again, carmelite means forbidden by the rabbis, by rabbinic law. So that is treated like a carmelite. You can't carry. Amar leh, here's my favorite quote. So Rabbi Yochanan says, puk tene levara. Go teach your Brita outside the Beit Midrash. We have no place for this Brita. It's a mistaken Brita. Why do I like this? Because it shows a lot of emotion and passion. And, you know, I don't want this in my Beit Midrash. You're wrong, right? You, you have it wrong. So he basically says, go teach this outside. Amar Abaye. So now the question is, there were two parts to what he said. He said, under the beam and between the posts. The question is, which part did he disagree about? Did he disagree about the whole thing? And did he think, against what we saw Rav Chista said yesterday, that between posts you can also carry? Or did he just mean under the beam? So we're going to have a debate between Abai and Rava about this. Amar Abai, Mistab Ramilte de Rabbi Yochanan tachar hakoa, ava ben lechayayim asur. He must have meant only under the beam, because Abai assumes between the posts is definitely going to be forbidden. Rav says, no, no, no. Rabbi Yochanan disagreed with the whole thing. He thought that between the posts, you can also carry. Each one is now going to bring a proof, and then we're going to have to say what each one does with the proof of the other. So we start with Rava. How do I know that between posts is also going to be mutar, according to Rabbi Yochanan? Now, you have to remember, Rabbi Yochanan was living in Israel. Rav and Abai are in Eretz Israel. They're, they're fourth generation. Rabbi Yochanan was second generation. So they're trying to figure out something that was said two generations ago in a different place. So what's the best proof they could bring? From someone who brought the Torah of Israel to Bavel. 
Ki ata Rav Dimi, when Rav Dimi came, he was one of the Nechute, the people who were Yordim, who used to come from Eretz Israel to Babel and would bring the Torah from there. He said, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Makom she'embo arba'a al arba'a, mutar lebnei reshut harabim u lebnei reshut yachid lekatef alav. This is something we learned at Masechet Shabbat. That if you have, look at picture number 61. If you have these beams, you have sort of beams, it's okay, a, a little space that's high from off the ground in Rishut HaRabim, okay, if it's less than four by four wide, then we treat this as what we call a Makom Ptul. And if you see in the picture, there's a little guy here with a yellow bag. He's got a white shirt and a yellow bag on his back. He's using, right, he's getting tired from carrying the heavy bag. He uses these to basically put his bag down, right? Sometimes you're coming home from the supermarket, you're carrying very heavy bags. You know, it's hurting your back. You want to put them down for a minute or two, so you put them down. The best place to put them is if you have a ledge, right? If you want to put them on the floor, then you'll have to bend down and pick them up off the floor. The most convenient is to use it as a ledge. Therefore, this is considered part of Rashid or Rabim because it's the use of Rabim, but it's this it's called a Makam Ptur because it's on a space of less than four by four. It's for use of people in Rashid or Rabim, right? And we allow this on Shabbat because it's called a Makam Ptur and you're allowed to move from a Makam Ptur literally means an exempt space. It means you're allowed to carry, we're gonna read it right now inside. Um Ubovad Shalo Yachlifu. Okay, what you what can you do? Right? So it's a if you're in a private or you're in a public domain, you can move your bag or anything you want onto this space as long as you can't say, oh, my house is here, public domain is there, and in between I have a makom p'tor, I'm going to move it from there. I'm going to say, oh, well, this I can do. And then from there, you can move it to the Rishon Arabim, even though technically speaking, you can move an item from a makom p'tor from a private to a makom tour and from a makom tour to a public, but you can't take one item and move it, you know, have it make that jump because in the end, you're basically, we don't want to allow you, people will think you can move things from Rishud Yachid to Rishud Rabim, which is obviously not allowed. So now, what does this have to do with it? Well, let's look at our space. Our space in between the Lechayayim is less than four Tvachim, by four Tvachim. So why don't we view this space as a makom tour? That's what Rava says. Therefore, it must be since Rabbi Yochanan said, as we heard from Rav Dimi, that if you have the space that's less than four by four, we view it as a makom p'tor. We can assume this is also a makom p'tor. This open space in the mavoi, which is in the entrance to the mavoi, which is next to the lechi, right? There's a lechi on one side. There's a wall of the mavoi on the other. We're going to view it as a, as a makom p'tor. So comes Abai. What does he say to this? And maybe you thought about this already. A makom p'tor has to be an object that has at least a height of three. In other words, this is just an imagine. You're, you're basically saying this imaginary space in between, not imaginary, but it's just space. It doesn't actually have an object. It's not like a like the case we just saw of a, of a, there was some height to it, right? It just wasn't four by four width, but there was height to it. It had some. So if we can't say just this dead space, which doesn't have any height to it, is called a makom p'tor, and therefore he says you can't carry there. Okay, Abai says, don't learn from that statement of Rabbi Yochan, and that has nothing to do with our case. Amar Abai mina minala. So now we need Abai's proof, though. Okay, so he can't prove it from there that he's, that he's he, he basically could say, Rabbi, that's not a good proof, but he has to prove his own. So where do I know that you can't carry between L'chayim, according to, to Rabbi Yochanan? So he says, Da'amar Rav Chama Bragulia Amarav, Okay, what's this case? This is a case, it's picture number 62. Okay, we have now, generally we've been talking about our Mavoy, that there's basically walls that just lead out of the alley. But now we're going to have a case where the walls of the, of the Mavoy narrow near the exit. So they get narrower. Now if they get narrower, that means there's basically a wall that looks kind of like a lechi jutting out. Right now, it's jutting out on the inside of the mavoi and then also outside the mavoi. But when you get to the exit on the mavoi, you don't really see anything, but you do see it from the inside. Because a few, right, if you're in this space, right, or in the space behind, you'll see these lechis jutting out. But it really juts out not as a lechi, it functions more, right? It just makes the e exit or the entrance to the mavoi narrower. So this is what we call. He says, Tocha Petach, if you're within the entranceway to the alley, which is, let's assume, it's narrower. Okay, if you're in that entrance, Sarich Lechi Acher Lahatiro. 
you need, now, what does this mean? It means that in the mavoi, you can carry, because in the wider part of the mavoi, there's a lechi there, because the wall goes in, and that wall going in is what we call near emi bifnim, right? You can see it from the inside. It's very clearly distinguishable as if this is, right? And then you basically say the mavoi kind of ends there. If you want to carry in the entranceway, which is now narrower, you need a new lechi at the end of that entranceway to allow carrying within the entranceway, okay? That narrower space. So what do you see here? If, theoretically, we're considering that whole narrow entranceway as a lechi, and you need a lechi, lahatir, what does that show? It shows, bein lechayayim is forbidden. So he says, from there I can infer that he thinks it's forbidden. Now, this, by the way, wasn't quoted in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, but we can assume if Rav said it, that Rabbi Yochanan agreed. V'chi tema, de'it be arba'a l'arba'a, maybe you'd say that the space has four by four tfachim, which means once it has four by four, if you remember, or or it's actually, it could be four amot or four tfachim. Remember there was a whole debate that if you had, what's the minimum size of a mavoy? It could be four by four tfachim or four by four cubits. So let's say it has four by four, and then maybe this whole space becomes its own mavoy. And that's why it needs a lechi. And not because it's viewed as bein l'chayayim, but if this already has the minimum size for a new mavoy, maybe we would consider this its own mavoy. And that's why it needs its own alley. That's why it needs a hetero, and then you won't learn anything from here. He says, that can't be, though, because ha-marav chanim barav ha-marav, because rav chanim barav said in the name of rav, toch ha-petach, in the entranceway, our case, af al pi she'en bo arba'a al arba'a, tzarich lechi acher latiro. He said explicitly in the name of rav, someone else, not the same person who just said it in the first place, someone else said explicitly in the name of rav, it doesn't matter how big, even if it doesn't have four by four, you would still need a lechi, which again shows Bain l'chayayim would be forbidden. So what's Rava going to say? Here he has a very interesting answer. Rava, hatam de patuach lekarmelit. That case where you needed a new lechi is a case, now generally what have we been talking about? An alley that opens to the public domain. We've always said, right? Public domain on this side. If it's mufulach, it's got public domain on both sides. But he says this is when it's open to a Carmelite, which is a space that's only forbidden by the rabbis, right? like a like a sea or like you know any kind of big space that doesn't have all the criteria of Rashid Rabin, has a lot of people but not enough people or not enough width or whatever it might be. Now, this comes up very strange. He's going to say that when it opens to Rashid Rabin, you don't need a lechi. This case was when it opens to the Carmelite. And then... The Bain L'chayayim is going to be forbidden, whereas if it opens to Rashid Rabin, we're going to allow the Bain L'chayayim. And that seems very strange, and the Gemara is going to say so in a very kind of funny manner. Uh, they say, Avala Rashid Rabin, my Shari, so you're going to say, if it opens to the public domain, we're going to be more lenient in the space in between the posts. Yitziva Ba'ara V'giyora B'Shmei Shmaya, the local is, gets the, the ground and the stranger gets up to the heavens. Okay, where does this come from? It's a Pasuk in Dvarim, in the Klalot, in, um, in the Tochacha, in the portion that says about all the bad things that are going to happen. One of the things listed there in Parshat Ki Tavo, in, in, uh, I think it's in Perak Kavchet, it says, I forgot to bring the exact verse, but it says there, you're going to be, right, the stranger is going to go up to the heavens and you're going to be low, low in the earth. Okay, and it comes from there and it's basically saying what? We're going to be, and what's it basically saying? We're going to be more stringent with something that's only from the rabbis and something that's from Torah law. We're going to be more lenient and say you could carry between the lechi here when it opens to Rashid Rabin. It's counterintuitive. makes no sense. So what do they answer? They take something from the laws of Ta'arovot, which is mixtures like forbidden and permitted or basar b'chalav, milk and meat. Okay, and we'll explain in a minute. In, yes, you could say that it would be the case here. Why? We'll be more machmir on a carmelite. Matza min et mino v'neol. Okay, let's explain what this means. What it means in Basar B'chalav is like this. Let's say you have a drop of, of milk that drops into your chillant. Okay, your meat chillant. So what do we say? Batel b'shishim. It's canceled out in 60. What if after that first drop drops in, another drop drops in? And now let's say there was 60 connected the one against the one drop. But now you have two drops. So do we say, the first one was already nullified, and it's as if it doesn't exist anymore, or do we say, matza mean it me no, the milk meets the milk, it finds its like, right? This is the opposite of opposites attract, right? It's, it finds itself and wakes itself up, right? Wakes up something similar to it. 
So that's ni'or. Ni'or comes from to wake someone up, lihitorer, right? To wake up or to orer, to wake something up. So what happens here? When it meets the other one, when it basically, if the, the mavoi, which is close to a karmelit, it's not really close to a Rashid or a beam, it's a little bit close, and that's why we have all this problem that people walk through, but it's much more similar to a karmelit. So if we say this space in between the lechi is next to the karmelit, then the karmelit meets up with it, and it basically becomes like a karmelit. It's, it's like saying we can't jump this up two levels to say we're going to turn it into a Rashid or a Bindo, right? But we can claim it's a Carmelite. So if it opens to a Carmelite, then the Carmelite basically turns it into a Carmelite. When it opens to a Rashid or a Bindo, they're two different, and therefore it's going to be, it's going to basically be state in its own independent identity and not lose its identity to the public domain. So that's how Rava answers Abaya's proof. Now we're going to have a question on Rava. So again, Rava was explaining again, this is all, how did they explain where Yochanan said, Puktana Levara, go teach this outside. What did he mean? Did he agree about, did he disagree about both? Or did he disagree only about the Korah, right? The bright had said, you can't carry underneath them. They're like a Carmelite. And came Abai and he said, he disagrees about both. You can carry under both of them. And Rava said, no, you can't carry between the Lechi. So, um, sorry, the opposite. Rava said you can carry underneath the lechi, right? It's my mistake. Rava said you can carry underneath the lechi, and then we had to explain, right? The only case where he doesn't allow it is if it opens to a Carmelite. That was our whole thing. So now he says, You don't think that Rabbi Yochanan thinks that between the lechi is forbidden? How do you say it's allowed? Again, when it opens to Rishud Harabi. Again, we're going to bring a statement. Someone said the name of Rabbi Yochanan. This is what we call wood paneling, okay? Let's say you have a bunch of panels of wood in kind of lined up at the Mavoy wall going from near the entrance to almost outside the entrance. We're going to see that ultimately they're going to understand that the last panel is sticking out a little bit of the Mavoy wall, okay? It's in picture number 63. So you have these four wooden, or it doesn't matter how many, but you can't really see in the video, but there's four separate ones with a distance in between them, okay? If you panel your wall, you probably put them right next to each other. Here, they put them with a certain amount of separation, and that's going to obviously be the issue. How separated are they? If they're less than Levud, then what are we going to say? We view it as one wall. If they're not Levud, then we're going to view them as four separate pieces. So what's the significance? So if you have these lechis, less than four tvachim apart from each other. Then we get to the machlok at Rashbag ve Rabbanan. How so? Le Rashbag da Amrinan Levud. Rashbag says Levud, which means what? He views these beams as if they're one. If they're viewed as one, now from where are you allowed to carry? Now we're going to see that everybody's going to say you can only carry up until where the lechi starts. Okay? Chodu hapnimi, basically. So, mishtamesh ad chodo apnimi shalalechi, which means you're going to be a lechi apnimi. Since they're all viewed as one long thing, it's one long lechi. So therefore, according to Rashbad, you're only going to be able to carry until the first panel. Once you get to the later panels, you're already between the lechayayim and it's forbidden. L'Rabbanan da'amre lo amrin on the vud, but according to the rabbis, there's no levud because there's almost four tvachim in between. Right? You'd have to have up to three. But this is more than three in between each one. So they're each viewed separately. Which one functions as the lechi? The last one. Because only the last one is next to the wall of the mavoi. So the outer one, he's going to say, mishtamesh ad chodo shal He's going to say, where do you have to carry until? Up until the inner edge of the outer one. Which again shows both of them agree that what? They both say you can only go up to the inner edge of the lechi. It's just a matter of where your inner edge starts. Everyone agrees that once you get to the lechi itself, you can't go any farther. So again, that was said in the name of Rabbi Barachan, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, which means that Rabbi Yochanan seems to say between the lechayim is forbidden. So Rabbi, how could you say he thinks it's allowed? So what do we say? Again, same answer. Hatam nami de patuach le karmelit. That's when it's open to a karmelit. Avala rishud arabim. So then the Gemara is going to ask again. Rishud arabim. My shari. So you're going to say if it opens to the public, he would allow this. 
right? The local gets to the ground, but the but the the stranger gets all the way up to the heavens. In yes, in fact, it's true. Matza mini mino vine ol, right? When it's near the Carmelite, it's going to turn it into a Carmelite. And basically, we're going to say that statement was only said in a Carmelite. And then it's not a question. Here we have a second answer to Rava to the source. Rav Ashi Amar kigon sheretzafo belechayim pachot mechot me'arba'a. Same thing so far. Less than four tefachim of distance, four handbreadths of distance between. But b'meshech arba amot. However, the distance from the first one to the last one was four cubits. Once it's four cubits, this is what we said earlier, it already becomes its own mavoi. So how do we, what do we say? L'Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel da'ama amurin an levud havalei mavoi v'tzarich lecha yacher latiro. According to Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, the machloket is not what we said before. Okay, the machloket before we said was, can you do it ad chudah pnimi, shela pnimi, right? The innermost lechi until the innermost point of the innermost lechi, or is it the innermost point of the outermost lechi? But now we're going to say the machloket is different according to Ravashi. The machloket is about if those four beams, again, were distance almost four tefachim apart. Rav Shimon Galil views this as one long wall. Since it stretches a distance of four amot, this is like the case we saw before where the walls went in, right? It's the same idea. Now you have a space that's four amot, which is basically the minimum length of a, a whole mavoi in and of itself. This becomes its own mavoi, and Roshbag says, you need a new lechi there, right? This, again, the first lechi that's inside the mavoi can function as a lechi for the inner part of the alleyway. But if you want to carry in this part of the alley, you're going to need a new lechi because this is all considered its own new alley. So he says you would need a new lechi. So according to them, you just have a few posts here. They're not all attached to each other because they're distance more than the laws of levud. And therefore, what would he say? What's going to function as your lechi? The outermost one is going to be your lechi because that's standing right at the mavoi wall. The others are just panels on your wall, have no relevance. And therefore, you would say, Lo lechi acher la tiro. according to him, you don't need another lechi. That lechi functions. And the, here, he doesn't say anything about what about the space in between the lechis. So this doesn't necessarily prove, right? It doesn't show that Rava was wrong because he doesn't discuss what the story is between the lechis. Okay, Ularam Shim and Gam. Okay, so now, so therefore, we have a different explanation. This has nothing to do with Bain Lechayim. Now we're gonna have a question. Ularam Shim Ben Gamliel. Ularam Shim Ben Gamliel lehave kinir emi bachutz v'shavem mi b'fnim. Why don't we say that? Why do you need another lechi when you have this paneling on the wall? And then this is what I said before. The assumption is that this just juts out a little bit past the end of the mavoi wall. The last panel is a little bit outside. So it's, again, it's flush against the wall, but it, it stretches a little bit longer than the mavoi wall. So that would be a case of near emi bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim, right? When you're, according to Rashbag, this creates its own wall. So it doesn't jut out at all into the mavoi because it becomes the wall of the mavoi is this long stretch of a few beams. But when you're outside, since it juts out, you can actually see it. It's noticeable from the outside. And if you remember... We said that there's a machloket about near emi bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim. And right now when they question Rashbag, the way he, right, the, we were trying to understand according to Rabbi Yochanan, he says, why don't we say it's near emi bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim and therefore it should count as a lechi and you shouldn't need another lechi to allow it, to allow carrying in it. So they say, mi di utama elele Rabbi Yochanan, aren't we trying to explain this whole thing was quoted in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. Remember, let's just go back. Rav Huna braid Rabbi Yoshua uh, sorry, Rabbi Barachana said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Ravoy Sheritzafo Belechayim Pachom Me'arba Banu Lemachlok at Rashbag Verabanan. So he says it's all based on this Machlok at Rashbag Verabanan. Whether you need, and then how did Ravashi explain, whether you need a Lechi to allow this or you don't. So he says, but even in the case where we view it as one wall, still it's noticeable from the outside. Okay, you can see it jutting out in picture number 64. Okay, I'm not going to show it on the screen because it's hard to see from the screen, but you can see that the fourth one juts out if you have the pictures in front of you. So basically, he says, we're trying to explain Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan, okay, so now, 
Are we talking according to Rabbi Yochanan? Ravin Amar Rabbi Yochanan. When Ravin came and brought, he was another one of those Nechuti who came from Israel to Babylonia. He said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Nir Emi Bachutz Veshavemi Bifnim Einoni Domi Shumlechi. And that's why, according to Rashbag, Rabbi Yochanan thinks Rashbag will require a new lechi because seeing it from the outside doesn't allow this to be called a lechi. Remember, you have to see it from the inside. Right? What's the machloket about this? Who's the lechi for? Is the lechi for the people in the mavoi, which is generally what we thought it was for, right? Because it's to tell you, ah, here's the border. Don't cross here. You're heading into Rashid Rabim. But some people think, no, the lechi is for Rashid Rabim. Why would it be? I didn't discuss this yesterday. Why would you think the lechi would be a noticeable marker for the people in the public domain? Because you might think if people in the public domain see people carrying in the alleyway, They'll think, oh, if they could carry, that's kind of a public space, and this is a public space. They won't really notice the difference. And they'll think that they can carry in the public domain also. And therefore, there needs to be some noticeable demarcation for them that we're entering into an alley here, and those people are in a different space than you are. So therefore, Niremi Bachut would be valid if we say that that's the important part of the Mavu. So anyway, you can't suggest, like they tried to suggest, that maybe we need another lechi, according to Rashbag, because it juts out, because the jutting out is only, for Rabbi Yochan's purposes, it doesn't really matter if it juts out into the public. It's a matter of the perspective of the people in the Mavoy. And for the perspective of the people in the Mavoy, this is just a, a wall. It's just a thicker part of the wall of the Mavoy. And because it goes for Amot, it's really a significant wall, and you would need another lechi to allow it, to allow carrying in that space. But again, this has nothing to do with, right, we're back to our original, this has nothing to do with, is the space between lechis allowed or not? Okay, since we've quoted now this issue of Nirembi Bachutz V'Shabemi B'Fnim, we're going to see the Machloket about it, and we're going to try to see who's the one who holds that it's allowed or not allowed. Um, itmar. So Itmar is always an intro to a Machloket between two Amoraim. Nirembi B'Fnim V'Shabemi Bachutz Nidon mishum lechi. Nir emi bachutz v'shavemi. Actually, here it's a machlok atanaim. Nir emi bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim. Okay, so everyone agrees that if you see it from the inside, even if it's flush on the outside, and on the outside it's not noticeable at all, that would be a lechi, because everyone agrees that for the b'nei mavoi, if, it, if it's noticeable to the b'nei mavoi, that's fine. The question becomes, Nir emi bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim. Rabbi Chiyav, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Rabbi. The two of them debate this issue. This is a case where we have two opinions. We don't know who says what. One says it works. One says it doesn't work. Again, this is where you only see it from the outside. So now they say, It seems like Rabbi Chia must be the one who says this functions as a lechi, even though it can only be seen from the outside. Why? Because he brought the following bright up. Kotel shetzido echad kanus mechavero. Okay, again, we're going to look at two pictures now. Picture number 68 and picture number 67. Okay, picture number 67 depicts a wall that's on the outer wall of the, the Mavoy already juts out to the left, right? You're outside the Mavoy on the wall that is, is flush with Rashid Arabim. There, there's an indentation in the wall. Okay, so when you're in your Mavoy, it's kind of in. But when you go out into the Rashid Arabim, it juts out somewhere in Rashid Arabim. So that is going to be called, you can notice it from the outside. You can see that there's a, a distinction in the wall here, but you can't see it from the inside. Another case is going to be where near Emi Bafnim, Vishavemi Bachutz, here's a case in 68, where there's an indentation in the wall of the Mavoy itself. So here you're going to be able to see it from the inside, but it gets kind of, it goes in and then back out. So basically, in the Mavoy, you're going to see a distinction there. But when you're in the outside, you're not going to see anything. Okay? So according to Rabbi Chia's Brayta, if one part went in, whether it's noticeable from the outside and not the inside, or whether it's noticeable from the inside and not the outside, Nido Mishum Lechi. This functions as a Lechi. Who brought that Brayta? Well, who brought the Brayta was Rabbi Chia. If Rabbi Chia brought this Brayta, what do you see? He holds... If it's noticeable from the outside and not the inside, it works. So there you have it. He must be the one who holds that. So now they have an interesting possible question on this, and they kind of answer with the obvious answer. Rabbi Yochanan, Milosh Miale? Wait, could it possibly be that this Brayta that Rabbi Chia brought, Rabbi Yochanan didn't know about this Brayta? 
Obviously, he must have known about this Braita. And if he knew about this Braita, it didn't hold this way, because remember, we said he doesn't hold this way. Ha ela shmiale. Uh, sorry, ha lo shmiale ha. What? He didn't hear this Braita? Ela shmiale velo serela. He must have heard about the Braita and just didn't hold that way. If we assume that Rabbi Yochanan heard about the Braita, didn't hold that way, can't we say the same about Rabbi Chia? Rabbi Chia nami, lo serela hai. Uh, lo serela. Maybe he didn't hold like the Braita, Rabbi Chia. Possible, right? Just because he brought the bright doesn't mean he held like it. So they say, what are you talking about? Hi, my, what, what are you talking about? Bishlama Rabbi Yochanan lo savala mishum hachi lo tanela. Rabbi Yochanan, if he didn't hold like the bright, it makes a lot of sense because not he didn't hold like the bright, and that's why we don't see Rabbi Yochanan quoting that bright because he didn't hold like it. But Ella Rabbi Chia, he eats it to lo savale, lamale lamina. If he didn't hold that way, then why would he have brought the bright in the first place? And people don't quote bright to sound for the sake of quoting bright they don't agree with. The fact that Rabbi Chia quoted this bright must prove that he held like the bright. So even though we can assume that Rabbi Yochanan must have also heard about that bright, the fact that he doesn't quote it proves he doesn't hold that way. Here, he didn't quote it. But Rabbi Chia, who did quote it, must be the one who holds that way. And therefore, he, um, therefore you can say that Rabbi Chia was the one. This was all to question. Maybe Rabbi Chia is not the one who says that it's Nidom Mishum Lechi. He says, no, it does work. Okay, um, the Nirami Bachutz does work according to Rabbi Chia. And therefore, we're okay. So, moving on. Amar Rabbi Baruch Huna. Nirami Bachutz v'shavemi b'fnim Nidom Mishum Lechi. Okay, so now we have it in the name of Rabbi Baruch Huna, that if you can see it from the outside, it works as a lechi, just like we just said Rabbi Chia said. So I'm a Rabbi, now Rabbi is going to question Rabbi Baruch Huna. Why don't we question this from our case that we saw yesterday of the courtyard? Remember the small courtyard that opens up into a bigger courtyard? So now that's a good case of, what did we say? The bigger courtyard can carry because it has these gifufin, has some walls, on the, on the barrier between it and the narrower one, you can see the walls. But when you're inside the chatzer, the smaller courtyard, you don't see any walls. It just juts out into this big chatzer. You can't carry, even in your own chatzer. So now, we would say, chatzer ktana shenifretza l'gdola, gdola muteret uktana sura. The big courtyard people are allowed to carry within their courtyard because there's a distinction. But the small courtyard, you can't see anything. So, right? Because it opens right into the big one. Vim ita. And if near emi bachutz would work, ktana nami tishtere, benir emi bachutz, veshav emi vifnim, we should be allowed to carry in the small courtyard because you can notice it from the outside, right? The barrier between the big one and the small one is very clear if you're standing on the outside in the big one. So therefore, again, look at picture. Now they have the picture here. Look at picture number 69, right? Yesterday we had to look further on. Picture number 69, in your smaller courtyard, there's a lechis kind of on the side as it stretches out to, so, and that's something you can see from the outside, not from the inside. So we, so Rabba says to Rabba Barafuna, if you think this works, why doesn't it work to carry in the Chatzar Ptana? So now what we're going to have to do is call, this is what we call an ukimta. We're going to say that Mishnah is talking about a particular case, not exactly the way we understood it to begin with. It's when, and look at picture number 70 now, the walls of the Chatzar Ptana, before we thought it was flush against the walls of the Chatzar Gdola. Now we're going to see the walls jut out farther. So now when they jut out farther, the lechi is no longer near the entrance. The lechi of the border near to the chatzer gdola is not recognizable when you're standing at the edge of the wall of the chatzer ktana because those walls jut out farther. And because they jut out farther, you're basically not going to be able to see any lechi mibachutz. It's no longer near emi bachutz. So they had to basically come up with a case that it's not near emi bachutz in order to explain Rav, Rabbi Baruch Huna's position that near emi mibachutz is okay. So we have to say, this isn't your Emi Bachutz, otherwise it would work and you'd be able to carry in the Chatzir Ketana. So to which the Gemara a- asks, the Lema Levud, Vitishtare. But why don't you say the Din of Levud applies here? Now, if you notice that picture, the way it was drawn is that the Chatzir Ketana is very wide. The Chatzir Ketana is just a little bit wider than it. So if those walls jut out farther, we can assume, and we'll see in a minute why we assume this, that it's less than three Tvachim from the wall of the bigger one, which means that we can assume Din of Levud as if 
these walls on the side that are jutting out kind of really attach themselves to the other walls, in which case you can see the Lefi. Because another get in, in the imaginary world, Levuv means they're less than three Tvachim. It's as if it's over there, which means it's as if it's not right here jutting out and it's not blocking our view of the Lefi from the outside. So therefore, the Lefi should work. And the Chitim, and if you want to say de Mifle Tuva, that it, it, from Din Levud, it, there is no Din Levud because it's more than three Tvachim away, can't be because Hatani Ravada Baravimi Kamei de Rabbi Hanina, he taught a Brayta about that Mishnah. It's very common that they were Brayta about Mishnayot explaining them. Ketana Be'eser G'dola Be'echatisre. The case is, and that's why it's drawn like this, that the Ketana is Ten Amot. Why? Why is it Ten Amot? Because that's a Petach. Remember, any more than that, it would be bigger, right? Then it wouldn't be a Petach. So it's 10 amot wide. The bigger one is 11. Now do the calculation. How much space is in between the entrance to the small one and the wall of the bigger one? Well, it's from 10 to 11. It's one whole ama. Part of that ama, now an ama is six tfachim, remember our whole discussion. So you could say three and three, but it's not because there's the thickness of the small wall. So the wall of the small courtyard has a thickness there. That takes up part of the one ama. You're now left with less than three on this side, less than three on that side, din levud. So basically, we're going to assume din levud, in which case we're back to square one. It should be near emi bifnim. Uh, sorry, near emi bachutz. Okay, and it should be allowed. So now they answer, well, you could have two answers. Ama ravina, b'muflagim mikolta zeh b'shnayim and mikolta zeh b'arba. Maybe it's not even, a little less than three on either side, but less than two on one side, less than, uh, more than, you know, four on, it's basically a little less than two and a little less than four on the other side, which means that there's no levud on one of the sides. Now, you might say, the lema levud mi ruach hachad what do we care? It's not on both sides. What do you generally need? A lechi on one side. So theoretically, if you have it less than two tvachim on one side, you should say levud. You basically count that little piece that connects the two, right, where the where the bigger one juts out, it should be viewed as your lechi. So why wouldn't you say that? We'll just continue a drop into the next page. Rebihi da'amar bi'inan shnei pasim. You must have, you'd have to say that the Mishnah goes like Rebbe who holds that to let a courtyard, now there's a difference between a courtyard and a mavoi. In alleyway, you need only one lechi. But in a courtyard, we're going to be more stringent. We'll see why in a minute. And you're going to need two pasim. You're going to need one on either side. And in this case, if it's two and four, you're not going to have it on the four side because, right, the, the wall juts out. Remember, our whole ukimta was the wall juts out and you can't see it from the outside. Only on one side, you'll have Din Levud where we then theoretically can view it in an imaginary way. And how do we know that Rebbe holds this? Detanya chatserni terep pasachad, according to Tanakama, Rebbe omer b'shnei pasim. Why is it different in Ali and a Chatzir? So there's two possible reasons given. One is a Chatzir generally requires more privacy than a Mavoy because it's more private space. So therefore you need two to allow carrying in it. The other answer is that if you remember our Mavoy, and here you really see it clearly in the picture, is very narrow, right? It's narrower more than it's long, right? We already said it has to be more narrow and it's a kind of a long rectangle, but narrow. If something's narrow, then one lefty is enough because you can view it kind of from anywhere. If it's wide, like this is wide and short, therefore you're going to need, if you're standing on one side, you're not going to see from the other side because of the shape of it, and therefore you're going to need two in a chatzir because a chatzir doesn't necessarily have to be longer than it is wider. And that's another possible reason for the distinction. Okay, we'll, fit it. we'll end here for today and pick up from here tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.